お前も家族だWe'll get to that. I've watched the Resident Evil franchise change a lot over the years. I've watched the Resident Evil movies, I've read the Resident Evil Nemesis book, and I've played a lot of the Resident Evil games. Never completed one though, besides Revelations 2. I got a weird history with the series, but that's gonna change in this video. We're going back to the Resident Evil that saved the series as we know it, and we're gonna see what it takes to get through the House of Horrors. <laughs> Man, if the NPCs don't kill me, I think they're just gonna yap me to death. But before we jump head first into the Baker household, we gotta take a look at how we got here potentially because when it comes to the Resident Evil title that we're talking about today there was a little source of inspiration to it that you might not have expected who is this? Resident Evil has been knocking it out of the park recently, but there were some growing pains in the process of getting here. The Resident Evil series was going through what you can consider a little bit of an identity crisis in the late 2000s, and it's actually not too hard to see why. The classic Resident Evil titles were known to be a bit slower paced and focused more on puzzle elements and strategies that challenged the player's choices. But when 2005 rolled around with the release of Resident Evil 4, things got shaken up a little bit. I knew you'd be fine if you landed on your butt. Fix camera angles and pre-rendered backgrounds, those are a thing of the past now. Now we had the ability to see the zombies from a third person perspective and we could do it with tighter controls and accurate combat. These elements naturally allowed Capcom to turn up the intensity a notch which was well received by its audience making it potentially one of the most well received titles in the franchise. So how could you possibly follow up on a game that felt so fresh and engaging? Well, you could just double down on the action. As the years rolled on with Resident Evil 5, 6, and spinoffs like Operation Raccoon City, it was clear that Comcap it was clear that Capcom wasn't necessarily putting its focus into survival horror. These games weren't necessarily bad, but they weren't necessarily scary either. That being said, you may or may not know that there was a little series that went by Resident Evil Revelations. <laughs> What the hell is it doing? It was having some pretty good success over on the 3DS. This was a title that did more than just bring impressive assets to an underpowered handheld. Oh no, this was a game that proved that there was still a demand for a gameplay element that those other big budget titles were holding back on. Wetsuits. But also survival horror. Capcom needed to figure out how they could embrace the new gameplay advantages that modern technology offered while still making them a little spooky and stressful. As one of the biggest players in the horror game genre, you might think that Capcom would have had a hard time coming up with these ideas. But as it turns out, sometimes you can find inspiration in the unlikeliest of places. When you think of classic survival horror, all the way back on the original PlayStation, the last thing you probably think of is a first person shooter. So I found a first person shooter called Called Resident Evil Survivor. Why the hell does Resident Evil Survivor exist? Why am I just now playing it and what does it even have to do with this video? Well, I'm gonna explain it to you. Well, as it turns out, Resident Evil Survivor might just be the first example of a first person shooter, Resident Evil. Yeah, it even predates Resident Evil Gaiden. That being said, there seems to be zero information on why this game was conceptualized at all. Capcom outsourced Resident Evil Survivor's development to Tose Software as a light gun game for the PlayStation, unless you live in North America where the light gun version was removed entirely. Because we were still blaming video games for everything wrong with the world around this time. Are we still doing that? Um... I'm not sure. This game flew under my radar for years as I'm sure it did a lot of other people because it wasn't the most well received entry in the Resident Evil franchise, but a unique one nonetheless. And since it's the first first person shooter Resident Evil, I had to check it out. Booting it up today genuinely surprised me. You do have a storyline here, following an unknown character trying to regain his memory. I don't remember anything. Who am I? This is literally just me on Monday when somebody asked me what I did over the weekend. It tries to pull the whole everything isn't as it seems card towards the end, which was fine, I guess. I may have been a bad person, but that was before. That's not who I am now. I will save these two kids. I swear it. Dude sounds like an alcoholic trying to rekindle a relationship with his kids. It was a little weird in some areas, but it was more than I expected. With notes scattered all around the level and these cutscenes filling out the story beats, it definitely felt authentic. The god-awful voice acting and random use of English words for signage took me right back to 1998 Raccoon City. I know you think that I'm a murderer, but you're wrong. 
I would never do anything like that. Guys, it's all right, it's cool. He said he's not gonna kill us, so it's fine. Jokes aside, I really love the atmosphere in this game. I'm just running into a wall. Everything from the ambient noise of an empty city street to the PS1 zombies stumbling around a faithfully modeled environment really make me feel like I'm seeing the classic titles from a fresh perspective. All the UI and menu systems feel faithful to the original too, albeit with some pretty limited crafting and uh, unlimited ammo for the pistol. You'll still be frequently pulling up your map to see where you're at in the level. And there's some very minor puzzle elements in here, but at the end of the day, this is more of an action-focused title for sure. Don't send this video to PETA. I really, really appreciate this game for its faithful aesthetics, but it's not hard to see why this game wasn't exactly a fan favorite. I know that if he goes there, he's going to be killed. What? AI pathing is just bad, and the game's idea of difficulty is mainly just duplicating bullet sponges in front of you that you can't avoid or stumble back with your weapons. Bullet damage also makes no sense. The shotgun is probably the worst shotgun I've ever used in a video game. It's like the shotgun is more effective on the weaker enemies than the stronger ones, then the pistol seems to be more effective on the stronger ones than the shotgun. Grenade launcher rounds would just pass through boss enemy tyrants. Huh? You know, the type of enemies that you would want to use your grenade launcher rounds on? And the grenade launcher's blast radius just kind of sucked for everything else. Did I also mention the voice acting and animations in this game? Your brother? Leave her alone! Lily Rock, go! It's also probably the shortest Resident Evil title in the series, clocking in at around two hours for completion. You don't even get the option to save your progress, so I hope you're ready to complete that two hours in one setting. That's if you can even complete it, because I was one death away from losing everything in the final boss battle of this game, because you get a certain amount of retries throughout the game, but once you're out of them, you gotta restart the entire game. So once the final boss had me at a one hit kill, I just turned on cheats. And even after that final boss working my health all the way down to zero, and after I used all of my special ammo against him, a ton of pistol ammo against him, this is how much ammo I still had to go before I took him down. Get it, get it, get it. Back up, back up, back up, be smart. Be smart, be smart, be smart. Be smart, be smart, dog. Back up. Be smart. Yeah, you go protect yourself. Or you use a little trick that you didn't tell me about now, huh? And that's pretty much the game's idea of difficulty, just throwing stuff in front of you and giving them a ton of help. I feel like with a few more game modes and some tweaks overall, this could have definitely been a cult classic light gun game. It has some good ideas, but man, the execution is rough. What I can't fault it for is the way it brings the atmosphere of Resident Evil into the first person perspective. It may not be the most fun Resident Evil game to play, but it definitely showed that there was some potential for a Resident Evil title in the first person perspective, an idea that Capcom wouldn't completely abandon. So this begs the question, what could a proper first-person Resident Evil look like? Well, I'm not really sure how many people in the early 2000s were actually asking this question, but I think it was still a question that deserved an answer. An answer we would actually get over a decade and a half later. Between 2012 and 2016, Resident Evil had definitely taken an action-oriented approach to most of its titles, and after 2015, there was a bit of radio silence with the series. That was until 2016 with the announce of Resident Evil 7. Resident Evil 7 would be the first mainline Resident Evil entry since 2012, the next generation of Resident Evil, and wouldn't you know it, it was from the first person perspective. There was definitely a vocal minority of critics who wondered if this formula could actually work, but diehard fans of the series seemed to be able to tell that this was a proper return to form for the series. And if you happen to be one of those weirdos that played Survivor all those years ago, you already knew that this formula had some potential. Hell, games like Outlast and even the PT demo were making waves around this time period, showing that the first person horror genre had some staying power. We just needed the Resident Evil touch. But were those critics right? Was this actually the right move for Resident Evil? Do any of these arbitrary questions actually segue my discussion into my playthrough of Resident Evil 7? Well, my playthrough of Resident Evil 7 started out with me wondering why I couldn't log into a profile to start the game. Turns out that having an extra wired controller in the back of your Xbox would softlock you out of it. But luckily, with my expertise of Googling forum posts, I wasn't going to let a USB port stop me. After that, that little hiccup, it was business as usual. I'll have 
two number nines. The game lets you start out with either normal or easy difficulty. If you were hoping for a hard difficulty right off of the bat, you'll quickly be glad that you didn't get that option. The game starts out with your wife sending you video messages on how she can't wait to come home from her babysitting job, which quickly turns into, I lied about the babysitting job. I got really dirty in this old house. Please don't come look for me. So naturally, you avoid calling the police and decide to do a little breaking and entering, you know, because that makes more sense. And also, you know the address of this place somehow. They must have been also having some marriage problems. How do you not know that your wife is doing this 007 secret agent shit? As you make your way into the property, you conveniently come across a bit of her belongings, and then you make your way into the house to find her. And that's for running away, you motherfucker. You then come across a tape that features some ghost hunters that attempt to enter the house before you, foreshadowing some of the weird shit you're about to experience. <laughs> the game does this VHS tape thing throughout the game to give you clues on finding things as well as providing some backstories and I thought it was pretty neat. Of course, it doesn't take long at all for the training wheels to come off once you're introduced to the Baker family. <laughs> <laughs> they don't actually do any baking. These psychologically disturbed individuals will serve as the tyrants who hunt you and block your progress throughout the game, leading to some creative boss battles. My favorite here is probably Lucas. He serves as a bit of a comic relief in the later part of the story and has a creative background for some of the traps and saw-like puzzles that you'll have to make your way through a few times. Unless you have any more surprises up your sleeve, I suggest you... Oh. Now that would be telling, Ethan. And I don't do spoilers. He's also probably one of the more mentally disturbed family members, which you'll learn later as the story unfolds. But that won't be until you survive an onslaught of psychological terror brought by Jack, Margaret, and even your wife Mia, who isn't opposed to putting a chainsaw through you. It's a weird way to say thanks for saving her. Yeah, the game doesn't pull any punches in the beginning and immediately pins you in a corner to just kind of figure out the combat if you want to survive. <laughs> Blocking incoming attacks and conserving your ammo is paramount to winning encounters because you only have so much health and you only have so much ammo to deal with the family. You also have to deal with these bullet sponges called the molded which look a little bit like the ooze from Revelations as well as some annoying ass flying things when you gotta deal with Margaret. But while there is this new focus on first person combat, that doesn't mean that there aren't puzzles to solve here. In classic Resident Evil fashion, whether it's finding a key to open up a weak wooden door that you probably could honestly kick right open, a dummy shotgun to put in place of a real shotgun, or finding there'll be a few roadblocks to solve on your journey, no matter how silly they are. You still get weapons as you backtrack and progress throughout the game, and the progression always feels pretty solid. You can find coins throughout the game that you can spend on player buffs or weapons locked in cages, which may help you more or less depending on what you save for. One revolutionary item that they added to RE7 is steroids, which you can shoot up to regain your health as well as get a permanent health boost throughout the game, which is kind of the opposite of what happens in real life. Also, he's having a heart attack. Yeah, whatever. I really do like the progression though. I never felt like I was backtracking too much or getting stuck in areas that I couldn't figure out, at least in the long term. This game still made me feel like an idiot that couldn't find his way out of a shoebox at times, but on the other hand, I'm also really terrible with direction in real life, so that kind of makes games like this a little more hard for me. But there's a very nice balance between difficulty and skill that I think they nailed here. It never felt too easy, but I never felt cheated either, for the most part anyways. You always seem to find just enough health or just enough ammo to get you through an encounter, but item management is still as important as ever here. You have a key taking up too much of your inventory space? Well, you could put it in storage to give you more space for health and ammo, but then you might end up having to backtrack to the safe room if you need that key again. This is one of the elements in Resident Evil 7 that really keeps the tension high and that fear of the unknown is baked into every section of the game. 
they know exactly how long to make you climb a ladder until you start thinking, man, is there a little spooky guy waiting up there to grab me? This pacing is what really keeps things tense and the rest of the elements are just the glue that bring it all together. Capcom knows why you're here, either for an adrenaline rush or to test your heart rate, which is achieved by the incredible world building and sound design crammed into the RE engine. You almost never go through the same area without being on full alert. Background music and ambient noises dynamically change as you progress, making sure that you never get too comfortable. And I'm pretty sure that item placement of resources gets shuffled around in the game depending on how you're playing. All of these elements come together for what is, in my opinion, a proper return to form that'll keep you on your toes. I feel like the game started feeling a little stretched out during the last few hours, but otherwise the story and pacing was pretty solid. No, no, no. My first playthrough was about 10 hours, but you gotta keep in mind that this isn't typically a one and done deal. You unlock the Madhouse difficulty and a new weapon for beating the game, which just incentivizes you to keep playing. There's also free DLC that takes place right after the ending of the first game that you can jump into, as well as some paid DLC that'll definitely stretch your mileage further, but otherwise you can beat the game in a few settings. This isn't gonna be some massive, expansive 30 hour story, but you're also likely not gonna get every single collectible and weapon in one play through. There are a few criticisms I could bring up for the game, like the fact that sometimes the characters will just kind of jankily make their way around objects that feels a little cheap, but overall that wasn't ever too big of a deal. The game definitely feels a lot more liberal in its approach to save points in this game. You don't really ever have to worry about dying and having to restart from a save like couple hours prior because the game always saves a checkpoint right before you're about to go into some big boss encounter or something. So even if you didn't save your game, you have the ability to keep retrying that section until you beat it. I'm assuming the Madhouse difficulty makes that a little bit more difficult, but yeah, that's definitely something worth mentioning. RE7 frequently goes on sale for about like seven to 10 bucks. I'm sure you can find a physical copy of it pretty cheap too. So I definitely think it's a worthwhile entry to check out if you just want to experience kind of the rebirth of Resident Evil. It's pretty good. That's my opinion of it anyways. What do you think of Resident Evil 7? Have you played it? Did, were you not really a fan? Do you think this was the proper return to form? You like the first person perspective stuff? Let me know in the comments comments, like the video if you liked it, drop me a subscription maybe, and thank you to all of my amazing channel supporters that have been sticking around even though I seem to only upload one video a month at this point. If you like spooky games and zombie games, I got a two hour compilation of all the zombie games I recently played, well, for, for the past year or two, go check that out. Hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one. It's been Josh, aka T, see you later. I didn't even think to make sure this was still recording, it is.